The next radio that we're going to restore is Radiola 26. This is a battery portable from back in the uh, in the mid-20s. Um, this thing is, is a very rare radio. You occasionally find them around, but, but they are definitely not just on every uh, street corner. Uh, this one is in physically excellent condition. Uh, electrically, it is really bad. All right, the inside the back where the batteries go. What we're going to do here is when we're done, we're going to put a power supply. We're going to build a power supply that looks like the original set of batteries. And they will go in there. And um, that's going to make it look really great. This one's going in my collection, of course. I have no idea what that keyhole is for. It's for um, something. I'll have to look it up and see what the heck that keyhole is for. All right, the first thing we have to do, um, as I said, this thing's in atrocious condition electrically. It has terrible problems. And once I get it out of the case, I will show you what those problems are. All right, to get it out, um, we just have screws that go around the outside here and we just pop them out of there. Let's see what you need. Take a look at the speaker. That's our speaker. I haven't tested the speaker yet. I don't know if it's any good. The driver could be good. It could be bad. Let me get the meter. <laughs> good. It is good. That is very good. Okay. That's wonderful. The speaker's good. I love it. Oh, I love it. Okay, these two are the speaker. Make sure I don't forget which two those go to. All right, then we have the antenna. All right, that's pretty easy. All right, I'm marking those. We don't forget where they go. This thing has the most fabulous old radio smell to it. It's got that smell of the old uh, varnish and the uh, old insulation. It's just uh, fantastic. Now this one will pull through, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that's the battery connector. Okay, that gets the radio itself out of the box, okay? Okay, now, we've got our problems. Get this over here. Okay, now, <clears throat> we got our six tubes here that came with the radio. I have no idea 
if they're any good or not. We shall own them first. If they got good filaments, that does not necessarily mean that they're in good shape. Now these, the filaments are diagonal. They're not adjacent like on the other tubes. Okay, they're diagonal like that. Okay, this one is okay. Okay, it would be from here to here. Got another one that's okay. This just means it's got a good filament. It doesn't mean that it's a, a working tube. We have to measure the emission on them before we know if they're a working tube. But if they got a bad filament, then you're out of luck anyway. There's three good ones. There's four. These may all be good tubes. Who knows? It's five. Well, I'll be darned. All of them have got good filaments. Okay, well, that's, that's nice to know. That's very nice to know. Okay, I'm going to set these out of the way so we don't break them. We don't need them for a long, long time. I'm now going to show you what the problem is with the radio. The thing that makes it where most people will give up on it and just use it as a display radio. Alright, this box here is called a catacomb. That, that's the real name of it. I mean, it actually was called that back in the uh, antique days, ancient days. And inside there is it's full of coils and other junk. Now, it's got audio transformers and RF transformers. But the first thing we have to do, we have to check to see that all of the, uh, all the coils in it are good. I think I've checked this one before and I found that there are like four of the coils that are bad. Okay, to test the coils in here, we have some coils that are grid coils and they will go to ground or to A minus and we have some coils that are plate coils and they will go to B plus. So <clears throat> if we're going to test them we can do it by taking all of the battery pins and connecting them together and go to one part of the ohmmeter and take the other part of the ohmmeter and go to the terminal. And we will get a connection to every pin if everything is working correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to take a piece of bus wire here, and I'm just going to go to all the pins, connect them together. Okay. So we've got B plus, B minus, everything, all hooked together. I'm going to take the meter and I'm going to connect it onto there. So that gives us one terminal. I'll take the other one and we will go down in and measure every pin. Every pin in the radio is going to be connected to a grid, a filament, or a plate. So it should have a connection to it. All right, we're going to hook got nothing on, got one on there, okay, we've got filament connections on the first tube, we have no other connection on it, alright, second tube, filament connections, I'm going to measure the filament connections first, then we'll do the others, okay, we've got filament connections on all of the tubes. Now I'm going to measure the plate and the grid. Nothing. We've got contact. Okay. Nothing. Got contact. So one of them we got a plate, the other one we got a grid, but no plate. No contact. Contact. Okay, this one we've got a uh, plate, but no grid. Plate. No grid, plate, no grid, and this one we don't have anything. Okay, now one of these could be the antenna input which would have the grid connected to 
the antenna terminal, which is now not connected. What I'll do is take some clip leads and I'm going to hook those two wires from the antenna All right, connect it to our common. And the other one is here. And to common. Okay, let's see if we got any more connections. Okay. We, we just got a connection there. Okay, this one. What? No. It still doesn't have any connection, okay? Okay. We got a bunch of tubes with no connections. It looks like the grid connections on all of them are not connecting. All right, I want to go over here. This is a speaker connection. Aha! Okay, this one here is the output tube and the plate has got connection to the speaker. So this one's okay. Okay, here we have plate, 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 and plate. All the plate connections are made, but we are not getting grid connections. This is on a, a 100 meg scale. It, it'll measure 100 megs, and we're getting no connection at all. Got a connection on that one. Nothing. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll go ahead and get the schematic of the catacomb and show you why we're in bad shape on this catacomb. It means we got five burned out coils in it. <clears throat> All right, the problem that we've got with this thing is this resistor right here. It's the grid leak resistor for the detector. It's open. It's a common problem. It happens all the time to these uh, catacombs. The gotcha is that that particular resistor is located inside the can. Now what they've done with this can is they took it and they filled it with liquid rosin. It's, it's just plain old pine rosin. And uh, it cast the entire inside of it with that stuff. So to get to that particular resistor, we have to melt that rosin out of there. Now, there's a Mickey Mouse way of solving this problem that some people have done. <clears throat> and what they do is they go to the grid of the tube and they wrap a piece of fine wire around the pin to where it isn't going to interfere and they pull that wire up the side of the tube. And then they go to the filament pin which is the common and they wrap another wire and they pull that up and they just they kind of glue them to the side of the tube and then they take a small quarter watt 5 or 6 mega ohm resistor and they glue it to the side of the envelope of the tube and that is such that it will fit in the socket and the wires won't contact anything and the, the, the resistor will be on the outside by doing that they can uh, get the radio working. It's kind of Mickey Mouse and that tube has to always stay in that particular socket. If you mix them up then you know, you're out of luck again. So um, that would be one way of repairing the radio without melting out the tar or the uh, rosin. Okay, the next thing we have to do is make up the tube 
for the detector. And what we do is we're going to take one of these tubes. I'm going to take one of the good ones. Okay, this is one that's a very good. And we're going to go from the grid and we're going to string a resistor on the outside of the tube to make it work. All right, so I'll find a resistor. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a piece of hookup wire and I'm stripping it to where I can get pieces of very fine wire. So I'm just taking this very thin strand of hookup wire. This is very high quality hookup wire. It's Teflon uh, insulated wire. All Teflon insulated wire is silver plated. Um, it, it has to be silver plated so that the Teflon uh, gases that come out of the Teflon uh, don't corrode the copper. Okay, now what I'm going to do Okay, <clears throat> filament, that's grid. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to wrap that around this pin. I'm going to twist it. Make it good and tight. See, these tubes contact on the very bottom point of, of the uh, tube. So I can wrap things around the pin and not interfere. Okay, so I got a piece of wire on there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the filament connection. Okay, now pull that down very tightly onto there. And we're going to take our resistor. Let's see how far this goes up into there. <clears throat> Okay, we're just going to stick our resistor just right on the edge here. I'm just going to hold that there and I'm going to wrap the wire around it. Okay, that's one. Okay, now to make sure that stays in place, I'm, I'm just going to put a piece of tape on there to hold it. Okay, there's just some nice capped on tape here. And I'm just going to go around there. Okay, see how that was done? We have the grid and the, and the filament connected together through the 4.7 meg. Okay, and that'll fit down in that socket and that takes the place of the uh, internal grid leak, which is over the circuit. Okay, what we've got to do is go ahead and test the uh, tubes. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, now, our filaments on these are diagonally on the, for starting with the right hand pin, they're diagonal. And then our plate and our grid are diagonal the other direction. Oh, we got customer in here. We got a customer. Okay, I'm going to set this to 1.2 volts. I don't want to overheat the filaments yet. Alrighty. And I'm going to set this to 3 volts. And uh, Yeah, it's, it's glowing down in there. Okay, for some reason I wasn't seeing it glow. Okay, the grid goes over here and the plate goes here. Okay, and I'm going to bring the B plus. Alright, that's 45 volts. <laughs> yeah, 
she wants to help us. She wants to help us test tubes. Okay, you can sit here in my lap. Okay, we're getting a good um, gain on that one. All right. So we'll just leave the setting at that point there, and we'll just test each of these tubes. <coughs> All right, one good one. A bad connection. There we go. I guess not. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we got two good ones. Okay, next. We're reading the GM on these tubes. Transconductance. Oh yeah, very nice one. That was a good one there. Filament. Okay, plate. And grid. Oh yeah, there's another good one. Wow. Okay. I'm happy. I'm going to write very good on that one too. Okay, that's about standard there. And the plate. Okay. All right. Okay, so all six tubes are good. That is excellent. All right. Now, this tube has to go in the detector. Okay, that's this one right here. Okay, that's going to go. So we have to use very thin wire on here because it's going down into that socket. There's clearance there, that, but it's very tight. Okay, see, just goes right in there. And since it's a plastic socket, the wires don't short. All right. Now, we can take the other tubes. Okay, we've got a very good one here. I'm going to put it as the second detector. And I'm going to put another one. RF. Okay, that gets our tubes in there. Now, if we measure between A- minus and A+, plus, we should see continuity, which is the filaments. <clears throat> okay, if I connect the ohmmeter onto there, we do. And if I turn the filament rheostat to zero, it goes off. Okay. Okay, the next thing to do is we have to see what we have to hook onto this thing just to test it. Um, the loop antenna serves as the RF input coil. So we don't have that hooked onto it, so it's going to be uh, have to hook something else onto it to, to do that. And then um, other than that, the speaker is all we would need. And then we should be able to uh, operate the radio. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll find a coil that we can connect to the uh, antenna terminals and act as the uh, input coil. Okay, now what we have to do, um, okay, I've got these labeled here as to what they are, and we're just going to make a check here. We're going to go from ground onto the power supply and make sure we don't have any shorts or leakage. Okay, we got about 10k on the 90 volts, 45 we've got no leakage at all. So that means that We've got a capacitor here. This is the bypass capacitor up on the top here. You see this box? That's a, a bypass capacitor for the power supply. 
it is leaking like a sieve. Okay, so we'll have to take that out of there, and we're going to um, we're going to make it look good. An 80-year-old paper capacitor, not too good a shape. That looks good. Okay. Two microfarad capacity. Ha! Ah, look how big that sucker is. Ooh. Okay, now we will replace it with this one right here, which is two microfarads. Look how much littler that is. It'll just go right inside there very nicely. Let's see if we can get this open. There's a capacitor. Look at that. Okay. Okay. Now I got some heat glue and I'm going to just take these pieces of popsicle stick and put them in there with heat glue and that'll do to hold the uh, hold the thing from falling down in there, okay? See, now that makes it to where, when we stick this in there, it can't go falling down. And when we bend these tabs over, then it holds it all back together perfectly. Okay, there we go. Two microfarad capacitor repaired. Okay, now uh, to test the radio, I'm going to use this loop off of an old radio. Um, we've got to have something connected to the antenna terminals because internally uh, it would be an open circuit if we didn't. So I'm going to just put this loop onto the uh, radio in place of the loop that's in the, in the cabinet. Because getting the cabinet over here and trying to hook it all up in the cabinet is just it's not going to be practical. Okay, now that gets us an antenna loop which should work okay. Okay, next um, we got to hook our power supply up. Okay, I've got everything connected up. We've got our power supply connected. We've got um, our speaker connected to it and we've got our loop antenna connected. So we got all our tubes plugged in. So we're, uh, we're ready to fire it up and see if we can get anything at all to happen.
okay. Okay, we got quite a bit of plate current. I'm going to increase this uh, voltage here. This should be four and a half volts. Not having any effect on the. Uh, Okay, we'll leave it at 4 volts. Um, okay, one thing we need to do is see whether we're getting oscillation in the uh, oscillator. This is a super hat, so we should be able to uh, get oscillation. I'm going to connect to ground somewhere. Okay, there's no oscillation at all. Okay, the, near one of these two coils, I, I have the scope going here, I should be able to see oscillation of the oscillator itself. There is none, which means that we, we do have a serious problem. Okay, that's the oscillator right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull that tube. Okay, got power off. I'm going to pull that tube out. And we'll reach down in there and measure the voltage. Make sure we have the right voltage. Let's see. Okay, 20 per scale. No B plus on the oscillator. Uh, very good. Okay. There could be a big, bigger problem here than what I'm thinking. We're, we're not getting enough current out of the power supply, so it looks like we're missing a connection to the B plus. Okay, let me look over here. We should get, okay, we got our 90 volts there. Okay. That's good. But we don't get anything on the oscillator. Nothing on the oscillator. Okay. What I want to do is look at the schematic and see if I can see where on the back we can contact the oscillator. Uh, Western, uh, okay. Um, after doing a bunch of adjusting, <clears throat> once we got that broken wire fixed, that got the whole thing working. So, So, <clears throat> next thing we're going to do, we're going to clean up the panel, get all these shined up and um, lacquered, and then we'll build the power supply for it that goes in the back of the set. Now, uh, these inserts on the knobs, I've got two missing here. So I'm going to make a picture of one of them, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it on a computer and make replacements. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to make a picture of both of them, and I'm going to make a duplicate of that one and put it there, and that one and put it there. And that'll make it look a little bit uh, symmetrical. All right, I'm just going to take camera, and I'm going to just make a close-up of that thing. That might be better. Sometimes the flash will wash it out. Okay, 
I'll take it in on a computer and make up the deals. Okay, now what I've made is two deals, one of each of those, and um, they should be, I don't know if they're the right size or not, I'll have to see. If they're not, I'll make a couple more. Alright, I'm just going to cut them out. I got the two little discs here cut out. Now I'm going to spray them. Contact. really good. They're fairly close. They don't match exactly but they're they're close enough to where they look okay. Okay. Now, that takes care of our four knobs. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, we got to buff these things up to where we get some shine into them. That uh, brass has completely uh, uh, corroded up over time. And all we do is we'll take fine steel wool, this is four off, and we're just going to buff these a little bit to make them have a little bit of contrast. Don't need a lot, just enough to make the numbers show up. It's going to look real nice. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a light color of stain on there to make them a little bit yellow. What I'm going to use is Colonial Maple Stain. This is just cheap, plain, Minwax stain. All this does is it takes the brass color that is a little bit too yellow and it gives it a little bit of a brownish tint to it. Makes it look a little bit aged. Alright, that looks beautiful. Now we have to just let that harden. It's going to take uh, overnight to harden and then we'll spray it with the uh, urethane lacquer and that'll make it to where it'll stay uh, stay on there forever and make it just beautiful. It looks, it looks great. It looks really great. Let's see if I can get... <clears throat> see how nice that looks? See and there's our two homemade ones. They look just beautiful. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and spray the radio. We want all of it to be sprayed, panel and all, but we don't want the knobs themselves to be sprayed. So we've got the knobs masked off, and we've got the hole going down inside masked off. But the rest of it, we're going to put a nice clean uh, coating of um, lacquer on. This is polyurethane which is a much better material than the just plain clear coat. Okay, here goes. Okay, now we want to get it from the other direction.
Okay, now we just let that harden for a day. Okay, here I have a picture of what the original battery pack looks like in the radio, Radiola 26. Okay, they have three dry cells for the filaments and four 22 and a half volt batteries for the B batteries. Okay, now, <clears throat> since the B batteries are packed in there with the uh, tops up, I'm not going to have to make the boxes for the B batteries to look accurate. However, for the A batteries, we're going to have to have these labels looking good. And I just happen to have uh, copies that I took off of an old A battery. Um, I had an old A battery, an original, and I went ahead and removed the paper from it and made a scan of it and have kept that in the computer so that I have something to make these co covers. So what we're going to do is we're going to make up dummy A batteries and then we're going to make up a box that from the top looks exactly like this but in reality it's going to be a single box and inside that box is going to be where we put the power supply. Okay and then we'll run the wires. It'll all look basically just like this when we're done but the power supply will be in the uh, B battery box. The A batteries will be in there just for looks and um, that will make it to where the radio has a very authentic look. Alright, our, uh, our, our A batteries are six inches long by one and three eighths diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut sections of uh, dowel here. This is just dowel from Home Depot. And I'm just going to make three sections of it, six inches long. And we'll build it up to one and three eighths and then we'll put the put the uh, covering on it. To build up the diameter, we're going to just use this uh, poster paper. I got a bunch of it here. It's six inches. We'll make it six inches tall. That diameter is not that important. We just need to have it near. It is just for looks. All right. All right. Now, this gives us our cylinder, which is um, the uh, very close. It's a little. It's just short of an inch and a half in diameter, which is the diameter of them. All right, now we're going to clean the ends off. To do that, we just take them over here on the the belt sander. Alright, now here we have our, our label and to put that on there we use just spray uh, adhesive. Okay, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to blast it with adhesive. Doesn't go all the way around, but it doesn't matter because this will go in the back. Nobody will see it. Stick that on there good.
the battery. We're going to put some terminals and stuff on the top. All right, for the terminals, we just take and we're going to put some studs in here with terminals on the top. To do that, we just go down into it. All right, for the tops, we're just going to make some little stick arms for the top here to make them look neat. Okay, I'm just going to use this uh, black. Good enough. Okay, now what we do for putting terminals. Okay, we have one in the center and one towards the outside. Okay. For the terminals, I have pieces of uh, threaded rod. Okay, and these little thumb nuts. See, and that gives us our, our nice looking little batteries here, which will go right in there. Okay, now we're going to make our battery box. Okay, now it's going to be a square, like so. This piece of wood is the right size. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut slots crisscross, and we're going to make it look like it's four separate batteries, but it's actually going to be just one block of wood. Okay, and then we're going to make a box that goes down from it. All right, the first thing we need to do is just mark this appropriately. Okay, we're going to put right here at four, and here's five by two and a half. Okay, so we're going to uh, just rip on down through there. And this will give us our look. like four separate batteries. All right, that's right where we need to go. Okay. We're over. Yeah, do the same on both, okay? for the cross slot. Okay. That gives us our, uh, our battery looking slots, okay? And we'll go ahead and we'll put decals on here to make it look right. Okay, and we'll have some uh, fan stock clips, the whole nine yards. Alright. Next, 
we have to make a box that this will go on because we're going to build the power supply inside of it. So we're going to have to put a box going down and that will hold the uh, power supply. So what I'm going to do is get some thin wood and we're going to cut this out so that it'll fit on the top and uh, you know look like a uh, nice little battery. All right. Now, what we've done is we have relieved the sides of this so that our box sides will fit just right, even with the top, okay? Now we'll make a box that will go right on there, and that's going to be for our power supply, okay? Okay, we got these cut. I'm just going to nail these on there using some little uh, wire nails. Um, let's see. Okay, about a quarter inch in, roughly. Now, we'll just let that glue dry, and that gives us our B battery. See, from the top, that looks just like a battery. I'll just grind that off on the, on the sander uh, once it hardens to make it just right. And that's going to look just like the uh, B battery right here. And we'll make a little retainer thing that'll go over the top like that is, and you know, the whole thing will look just real. Okay, now these B batteries have got more terminals on them, so we're going to do the same thing that we did with the A batteries. We'll just put some studs in there and nuts on there. They'll all be dummies except for uh, the ones that actually have voltage on them. And then inside here is where we're going to build our power supply. We'll just mount the transformer and the capacitors and stuff in there. Okay, now we'll go and hacksaw them off and we'll put these on first. Okay, that gets our battery. Okay, see and that'll sit in there like that and um, I mean it looks just very much like a set of four batteries. Okay? See, and that'll be uh, down. The, that'll be on the bottom, so nobody will see that. And this one's up against the back wall, so nobody will see that. This one, uh, the other batteries go up against it, but you can see down in there. And the top, you get just a little glitz, but it's going to be so little that uh, nobody's going to really see it. Okay, that that finishes the box. Now our transformer. This is our transformer we're going to use. That fits right in there, and then the rest of the components will be in there. We'll build up the power supply. Okay.
All right, we're going to get busy and build the power supply for this thing. Um, here's a, a quick little schematic I made of what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make a fancy power supply. All right, we've got a little power transformer, which is... Uh, for this radio, just needs to be a little bitty thing like this. It's only a few watts that the uh, radio consumes, so we don't need a big transformer. Let's see if I can keep this focused here. Um, run it into two bridge rectifiers that just changes it into DC, couple filter capacitors. For the A, we're going to go ahead and use a little regulator because we don't want to risk the filaments in those expensive 199 tubes. So we have a uh, just an NPN transistor with a zener, uh, 4 volt zener on the uh, base to uh, regulate. So our output voltage will be about 7 tenths of a volt less than the 4 volts. So I think I've got some 4.7 volt, they're right near 5 volt zeners. I'll just use one of those and that'll give us our 4 volts for the A+. Um, we just use a couple resistors to bias the transistor to another capacitor to, to filter it so we can have some really good DC. When, when we're using tubes that have a filament cathode, uh, we want to have pure DC on it. We don't want a ripple. Uh, ripple will go ahead and cause hum in the radio signal. So we'll go ahead and make sure this is filtered very well. Now for the B+, we have two voltages we have to get out of the B plus. We need the C minus, which I forgot to draw here. There we go. C minus. Okay. We we um, have a volt. We have a five volt zener. We need a, a, a four and a half volts uh, C minus for the radio. So we'll use a five volt zener. And uh, the, the uh, current flow through that zener will go ahead and develop 5 volts between ground and C minus with the, with the transformer side being negative. Okay, that derives us our, our C minus. Very low current for the C minus. It, it's uh, uh, a few microamps at the most. All right, for the B plus, we have 45 and 90 volts that we need. This in focus. Okay. So we use a string of four 24 volt Zener diodes. These are 24 volt one watt Zener diodes. Two of them together will give us uh, 48 volts, close enough to our 45. The two more together will give us um, uh, 96 volts, which is close enough to our 90. And then we'll put uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, bypass capacitors on each of the supply for uh, good practice. And that's all there is to it. There's just nothing to it. And since everything is low power, we don't need it to be any big components or anything. All right, so how are we going to build it? <clears throat> hey, power uh, circuit board. I went ahead and uh, made up a circuit board for it. And this has the uh, rectifiers, uh, the transformer, uh, the rest of the components on there, Zener diodes, all of it, just mounted on a little circuit board to make it nice and clean looking. Um, all right. It's handy to have circuit board making materials in the garage. Circuit boards are very cheap nowadays. Uh, you can get a circuit board made for about $10 total, including shipping. But it takes you um, a week or two to get it. If you want to think today, well, hey, you got to do what, what I did. I made this one this morning. It doesn't take but a few minutes to lay it out on the computer. Okay. Now a little bit of acetone. off the uh, resist. Okay, and that gives us our circuit board.
Okay, we've got the board pretty well populated here. I'm going to stick this transformer on there. Okay, about 3.3K, a 3.3K resistor. Six, that's pretty close. Okay. Let's see. I want a nice one watt resistor here. It's going to have a little bit of power in it. Not a lot, but it'll be over a half a watt. That's gonna, I'm going to try this and just see what happens. Okay. Okay, I'm going to set this. <coughs> Second one, we're reading 45 volts. Okay, here. Scale. Reading 4.9 volts on the A plus, and then the um, C minus. That's backwards. I gotta go this way. Five point one volts. Okay, that's it. See, and this will sit in there right like that. We'll just put some screws to hold the board down, and then we got to hook uh, wires to the various uh, terminals here to, to make it where we have connections, and that's going to uh, be our power supply. Isn't that beautiful? That looks so real. It looks just like a real, uh, real set of batteries in there. Okay. Next thing to do, we have to have to fix the uh, <coughs> we have to fix the uh, slip rings on this antenna so that they connect. If they don't connect, then um, we won't get any signal into the radio. I've done one of these before. The way it was not fun. Look at the dirt I got on myself. Ah. That's dirt from probably 70 years ago. <laughs> no telling what the heck is in it. Oh my god, I could have every kind of disease you could imagine. Stuff from back in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Whew. Oh, heavens. Man. Flesh-eating bacteria. Uh, you can, you can. Uh, now, I think we take that. Yes. Okay. Now that lets us get the antenna out. You see, we got two little spring-loaded clips here. 
and that this one is just a, a point contact in there. Okay, I'm going to measure on that, make sure we have connection. Okay, I'm just going to take the meter and measure. And we do. We have, we read the ohms of the, uh, we read the ohms of the uh, antenna on the slip rings. Okay, so that little cup has to be absolutely clean because that's the bottom connection. So I'm going to go into there with a exacto, and I'm just going to, going to clean that out. Now, what I've done is clean the bottom connections. Okay, the antenna in this thing is connected through two spring-loaded uh, contacts here and the center connection here. Okay, the center connection goes to the little tip and the spring-loaded contacts ride on this brass disc. Make sure that that brass disc is polished uh, properly. Now, the top connection on the um, loop is made only when you're connecting the antenna onto the back connections. These two connections on the back here are used when you're going to put the uh, antenna on the back connections. You've got two connections right here, okay? This antenna goes in the same direction. Like that. Okay, see in that, the um, connections to the antenna are made to these two metal clips. And these little uh, tips on there fit into these holes and that holds your antenna in the back. Okay, that makes it to where <coughs> If you're operating the radio on the table and you just want it sitting there without the door hanging open, you can do it. Because if you've got this antenna in there, when you've got the door closed, you can't get to your controls. Of course, when you put the antenna in, make sure that the slip rings are on the bottom. If you put it in upside down, you'll get nothing. The radio will not work. All right. Okay, power's on. Now we'll go between um, common and the 90. Let's see. Uh oh. Get nothing. Nothing. Oh my God. wire stuck across the stupid terminal. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Alright. Ah. Now we're not pulling any current at all. Before it was pulling a bunch of current when there's no load. That was a bad indication. Okay. We're reading um, 90 volts, 45 volts, okay, and go down lower, and here to A, we're reading 5 volts, and C, minus 5 volts, okay. Okay, and this is our 90, and that comes right here, okay, and this is... Um, the A that goes right over here. Okay. It was in the lake. Okay. Now we should have the correct voltages when we fire it up. Okay. Don't bring any current. Okay. 
first and we'll read the A. Okay, 4 volts. C minus, 5 volts. Okay, 90 volts, 45 volts. Okay, all the voltages to the radio are correct. Alright, now let's see if we can make it do something. Will it do something? <coughs> Alright, let's see. Um, I haven't changed the tuning, so it should be working. I should. doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything at all. Um, we don't know that the speaker's good, but uh, we're not getting any um, signal at all out of the speaker. Nothing. Zilch. Fake batteries. Okay, there's. One. Okay, I felt it move. connect that signal generator on here, we should get a lot of noise out of it. We can hardly hear it. At least it's... Alright. Hey, it looks clean as can be. Magnetism. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's put it back together. Okay. Um, all right. Let's put all of it back together again. That's, that's about the same position it was.
not a fun job. Melting the catacombs out is not a fun job at all. Okay. And then, go at the bottom. Um, beautiful looking internals, looks original, you know, like it has original battery pack and all, power supply, dummy batteries for the A. <laughs> okay. We just curl it up and we can stick it in the back here. And which way? There we go. Got an original handle on it. A lot of these, boy, you find them everywhere but don't have a handle. Their, their handles have rotten off. This one still seems pretty solid. It's, it's, I'm not afraid to carry it by the handle. All right. Case in original condition. I'm not going to uh, refinish the case because uh, that would cut its value. Um, with it, with original finish, the the, uh, the case is worth more. Uh, later on, I might go ahead and fix the latch. It's, it's it the little latch thing is broken off right here. There there was a little tab with a hole in it, and that caught a little catch right here. And somebody broke that off. They they always break off. So somebody stuck a little Mickey Mouse cabinet catch on there. One day I might fix it, maybe not. It doesn't matter. It isn't important. Okay, that's it. Next project.